Hey everyone, my name is Yaro and you're listening to the DIY Business Podcast. Yay! <laughs> Thank you so much for your patience. I know it's been a little while since you last heard from me on this podcast and that is because I moved to Scotland, I moved houses, I enjoyed summer, I had a lot to unpack and now I'm back. I'm properly set up and I'm excited to bring you more episodes in this upcoming season and to kind of pick up the pace a little bit again after a little bit of a break. This episode, honestly, is one of my very favorites that I've ever done. I spoke to Elitria of Elitria Communities about, well, building community around your business. We spoke about reaching out to other people as an introvert, about creating working conditions that are really sustainable and that feel good. Um, We also talked about overcoming social anxiety and the magic of creating community projects that go way deeper and that make space and time for connection and intimacy. We also talked about redefining our ideas of success and adulthood in air quotes, which as you know is one of my favorite things to talk about. And we spoke about rehumanizing business relationships and really thinking about how we can offer transparency and kindness and connection and make other people that we're working with feel seen and heard, which I think is so important and so powerful now that we're spending a good chunk of our lives on the internet, really. So yeah, I hope you'll enjoy this episode as much as I did. Let us know. I think we both would really love to hear from you. Let us know also if you have any questions at all, um, or if there's anything that you would like us to expand on in a possible future episode. A small announcement from me, which actually now that I say it isn't so small, I was sitting down this morning in my meditation corner when I really felt like I have found the sweet spot between one-on-one support and running my collective, teaching, design work and tech support and it feels so good. And I feel with every year that I am able to be more myself in my business, explore my truth and then also speak it even if not everyone will like it, which is cool. And I'm just so grateful. I'm grateful that you have been on this journey with me. And so, yeah, thank you so much. Um, Many people have joined the DIY Business Collective last month and I'm so grateful for the people that have come together. This Sunday, so two days ago, was our kickoff call, which was incredible, really beautiful, really cool people. <laughs> and we're moving forward now. Next week is the first group coaching call. I'm releasing um, new modules into the course as we speak and I'm definitely up for more people joining us. You can watch all the replays and you also get access to a huge archive of all the teaching that I've done in the past year. So there's an existing eight module course and there's I think more than 10 um, replays from workshops that I ran last year that you can enjoy in your own time. So a quick recap, the DIY Business Collective has at its core a 10 module video course that teaches you everything from newsletter strategies, setting the tech up, finding a way around social media, creating graphics, thinking about pricing accessibility, creating offerings, self-care for entrepreneurs. So I really feel like it's everything that you need to get started, Um, but I also really wanted to have this container um, where people can be together and receive the kind of support they need. So we also have monthly group coaching calls where you can ask me absolutely anything. You can be witnessed and seen and connect with other people. Then we have themed monthly live workshops in which we go deeper. Then we have weekly journaling prompts to kind of connect on our community on Mighty Networks, which is far away from social media, uh, free from destruction and just full of really cool people. It's more than 60 right now doing the program already. Um, And then we have quarterly business planning workshops in which we step away from our business for a moment to really see the bigger picture and make plans about how they are related to, uh, yeah, like how we want to move forward and how that's related to our bigger life vision, which I'm also really excited about. Um, It's $24 a month, which I find really affordable and I'm really proud that I found a way to make that so accessible. Um, And then there's a seven day free trial. So if you want to check that out, you can use that week to come to our workshops and meet everyone and see if you like um, the online training itself as well. And so if you have any questions about that, let me know. But for now, on to today's show. Thank you for listening. Hey, everyone. I'm really excited to speak more about community with Elitria today 
So as you know, this is something I'm super passionate about in my business too, but there's a lot to think about. And my guest today has so many really cool ideas. We met in also a community group as it happens, which is run by Sophie Dale. It's called Creatively Connected. And one day there was a mastermind call, or would we call it that? I'm not sure. But it was like a cool call. We just came together and we talked a little bit about podcasting. Um, and then I got to know Ellie's work on the website and saw some of the previous projects that she's been working on. I was just like, whoa, really want you on, on my podcast. So I'm super excited you said yes. And thank you so much for being here. Hey. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's a, it's a huge pleasure. <laughs> so do you want to maybe begin by telling us where you are in the world right now, what nature is like around you? Yeah. So I'm in Copenhagen in Denmark. Um, and it has been, we've just come off the end of a heat wave. Um, so we've got my favorite weather in the world at the moment, which is kind of soft and gray and cool, mm -hmm. very gentle, non-demanding weather. Um, but there are flowers everywhere. Just outside my window here, they have uh, a flood of pink Japanese anemones, um, which are beautiful and attract loads and loads of butterflies and things. So I have a little mm. cloud of butterflies outside my window every day. That sounds so beautiful. There's like, um, a, a, yeah, there's a lot of butterflies here at the, at the moment too. And it sounds like I've read somewhere that has to do with the heat wave and the intense rain and like lots of different things I think have come together this yeah. summer to really grow the butterfly population, which makes me super happy. So. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> when I walk down the lane to my house, because I live in the city, but I live in kind of um, just on the edge of a park. So it's very kind of rural. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and when I walk down the lane to get to my house, there's Buddleia down both sides. And it's just like walking through a cloud of butterflies. It's incredible. Wow, that's so cool. <laughs> so we've already touched a little bit on what, you, what it is that you're doing, but maybe you can say a little bit more about, you know, why are you doing this work? How did that come to be? What are you doing? I'm so excited to hear more. <laughs> okay, well, um, what I do, uh, for anyone who, who doesn't know me, um, my specialty is running online community projects. So that means bringing together uh, a bunch of people over the course of about a month um, and diving deep on one, or one particular topic um, and having a discussion about it, basically. Uh, they are, oh, they're so good. They're just so good. I was so happy I get to do this work. Um, Every single project that I've worked on has been incredible. Um, and we've covered topics like, um, we've got a project coming up, which is about ageism and how um, women are supposed to be, become kind of invisible after the age of 50. And uh, is run by a, a, a woman who runs a company called Rebel Thrones Rising. Um, which is just, that just gives me goosebumps talking about it. Like the me idea too. of rebel crones, like I want to be that when I grow up. Um, I've got a, a feminist life coach who's, who's running a project coming up in the autumn about um, uh, un untangling kind of feminine conditioning and the masks we have to wear as women to just be perceived as acceptable. Um, I've uh, we've had projects about... Um, the massive turning points in life and how they transform us. Um, one's about the state of the, the online business world and, and anti-hustle culture and stuff like that. Um, so they're all like really big, meaty topics. Um, and people come together and there are submissions, um, like content submissions, essays and things from people. Uh, and then everybody else can kind of discuss and share their own stories and it brings people together in this wonderful kind of vulnerable way over what is on the internet a really, really long period of time. Like we don't get to gather for, for with that level of depth on the internet usually. It's like a weekend here or a week there and everything whooshes past super quick. So these projects are a real opportunity to slow down and really kind of think stuff through, you know? Mm. Um, and yeah so that's the, that's the kind of primary thing that I do in my business um, and I also uh, I've just started running a group program called love is greater than numbers 
um, which is about helping introverts and highly sensitive people to uh, get connected and start building you know, those all important relationships that every business needs and focusing on the quality of the relationships rather than masses of followers. Mm -hmm. And the second part of the question as to how I actually got started with this is if you had told me like 20, 25 years ago that I would not only be doing this work, but absolutely loving it, I would have laughed in your face. Um, I was, uh, my, my background is in marketing. Um, and until the age of about 24, 25, I had crippling social anxiety. Like I couldn't speak to another human being. I couldn't look anybody in the eye. Um, I have Asperger's as well, which <laughs> doesn't help. Um, but I, I worked in a, or I tried working in a kind of normal career in my twenties and hopped from job to job. I always felt out of place. I could never find somewhere where I felt happy and that didn't hurt. Like going to an office every day physically hurt. I couldn't bear it. So I, my, my solution was to just to jump to a different office and try that and see if that would work. Mm. But uh, at the age of about 27, 28, I decided, okay, that is enough. I'm going to figure out how to, uh, to, I don't know, make a business or, or just find a way to earn money that doesn't involve like going in to a place every day and being bombarded with stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I read a fantastic book. Uh, by a woman called Barbara Winter called Making a Living Without a Job. And I was so excited. This is the first that I kind of heard of like not having a job. It wasn't in my orbit before. And I was so excited by that book that I stayed up all night. I read it in one day. I stayed up all night, like making lists of all the things, all the skills that I had and all the ideas that I could do and like all the different things that I could imagine people paying money for me, uh, to me for. Um, and that kind of blew my world wide open. Uh, so I went out, I just left my husband at the time and left my job and I just moved to a brand new city as well. I moved to, to Bristol from the countryside. So I was one of those, I don't know if the like Saturn return means anything to you, but it yeah. was mega, <laughs> yes, wow. mega Saturn return thing. Um, so I, I went to Bristol. The, I didn't have a, a like a business plan. I didn't even have a business idea. I was just like, there's got to be something. I've got all these skills. I've got all these talents. Someone's going to want to pay me money for them at some point. So, so the only thing that I could think of was to just go out to places where other people who had their own businesses were and talk to as many people as possible. Um, I had luckily gotten over the worst of my social anxiety at that point. Um, but the, my, my autism really kind of helped me with that because it was a mission. Like I had a clear defined goal that I wanted more than anything else in the world. And I would do whatever it took to make that happen. And I was absolutely terrified. I was nervous as hell every single time I walked into the door of some networking thing. And I went to everything. Like I went to like lecture series. I went to BNI networking, which is horrible. <laughs> um, and everything in between, just anything I could find where the people that might want to work with me were. Um, and after a couple of months, uh, I ended up meeting uh, a woman on Twitter, I think. Like Twitter was the only thing that was around. I think it was before even Facebook was a thing. Um, and I, I happened to get chatting to the woman who was writing the Financial Times Guide to Business Networking. And we got chatting and I told her what I was doing. And she was just like, wow that's insane can I put you in the book um which I thought was absolutely hilarious like I going from someone who couldn't talk to anybody to being in the financial times guide to business networking is just bonkers <laughs> um but she also introduced me to my first clients um and I ended up doing kind of admin copywriting a bit of marketing assistance that kind of stuff um and that's how my kind of self-employed life got going. I did that for a few years. And um, then I went through uh, what was at the time diagnosed as a, as a period of depression. But I now know since getting my autism diagnosis that it was just an epic shutdown. Um, and I basically 
went to bed for a month and didn't come out. <clears throat> Excuse me. And during that time, um, I started picking up kind of um, making artwork and it's something that I'd done my whole life, but I really started focusing on it. I was just like, this is what, this is what feels good to me right now. And I also kind of uh, got into the idea of gratitude as well. And I ended up doing a blog project where I, I um, made a, a painting and wrote a thank you letter to someone who had changed my life every week for a whole year. So it was 52 paintings, 52 thank you letters. And I actually sent them out to people as well. Um, and over the course of the year, over the course of doing that, um, I started to get, like people would see my, my paintings, my illustrations, and I'd started to get commissions like completely organically through doing that. Um, and I shifted my business into doing like some illustration and a bit of creativity coaching and um, realized that I was, the people that I was working with doing the marketing stuff, nine times out of 10, it would end up being coaching because um, a lot of creatives struggle with marketing. So you have to kind of coach them to the point where they can actually do the stuff. So I was doing that. And that was when I discovered these community projects. I'd seen people do kind of various versions on them of them online and i i thought they looked i thought they looked cool i didn't really kind of think of them as a marketing thing at all i just thought that's a really interesting idea um and one day i was having a conversation with with an incredible artist friend of mine who is the epitome of a real artist you know capital letters inverted commas she, she earns a full-time living from her artwork. She exhibits all over the world. She's in, in, you know, she's been in Elle Decoration. She's been in all sorts of magazines. She gets commissioned by shakes and hotels and cruise ships and the whole thing. Like she's a real artist. Um, but she was saying to me, like, I'm not a real artist because I don't do paintings. I do, I do paper cuts, like that's not real. And I said, don't be ridiculous. If anyone's not a real artist, it's me. I just do these silly illustrations and, and they go in books. Like, that's not real art. And um, we, we both realized that we were being completely ridiculous, but it's a conversation that stuck with me. And I thought, like, what is wrong with, like, society's idea of what an artist is? That two people who are making a full-time living from, from selling artwork don't feel like they're proper artists, like they're real artists. And that was the birth of my very first community project. It was called Demystifying the Artist. And I got 30 of my artist friends together, like real working artists who were, you know, earning a living from it, being proper artists, you know, by any criteria. And I asked them, like, what does being an artist mean to you? And I just knocked this thing together and I put it out. I figured out how to do it. And the response was a phenomenal um i had about 700 people sign up to receive the project i had another oh, 250 300 people in the facebook group like talking and commenting every day it's the most engaged community i've i've ever seen like i was blown away and people were were making friends they were sharing their own resources they were connecting in the group and there were so many people going, oh, my God, I thought I was the only one who felt like this. Like, thank you. And uh, it was just the most incredible experience. And I got to the end of it and I was like, wow, that was pretty good. Um, I wonder if it was just a flu. So I did another one and then I did another one. And at this point, they kind of happened at the same time that my love for what I was doing was on the decline. So I realized that I didn't like being creative to somebody else's specifications and I was getting really kind of tired and resentful of the the clients that I was working with like the, it just wasn't gelling for me at all and I kept saying to anyone who would listen um all I want to do is community projects like these are the best things ever I just want to do that and I'd looked into kind of getting sponsorship for them and all these different ways to monetize them. And it just, oh, I just couldn't figure it out. Um, so I had, a, I had a little marketing gig that I had kept on, a um, freelance job, which I knew was going to last for a few months. And I just closed my business in February of 2018. 
closed it all down, deleted all my social media accounts, deleted my mailing list, just got rid of everything and thought, I'm just going to do this little marketing gig and read books and take naps and chill out and just not be performing on the internet for anybody for a while and see what happens. And I thought I'd give myself a year to kind of figure out what was going to happen. But six months after I closed the business down in the August, it just hit me like a bolt of lightning. Like, oh, I could actually help other people to do these projects. Like, this is, this is amazing. They get results. They're brilliant fun. They're perfect for introverts and sensitive people. And they're a great way to be visible without actually having to be out there yourself, kind of on a pedestal. Um, and that's, that was, that was it. A month later, I had a website and I had, uh, my first kind of beta test client going through the process, which was lovely Sophie. Um, that's actually how that membership group came about was from her doing that project and, and falling in love with the community that she'd built so much that she changed her business model to accommodate it long-term. And then, yeah, that was almost a year ago now. And here we are. <laughs> That's so beautiful. Thank you so much for telling us that story. I, I resonate so much with a lot of different things that you said from like really hating having to go to an office to wanting to build community, but not wanting to be out there on a pedestal all the time. And um, yeah, I think so many of us can really relate to that. And I also really love how your story illustrates that following what you're passionate about, what you're really good at, what comes naturally to you can really work. And if I'm honest, if I see that out there as a meme that's really flat and doesn't have any context, I'm yeah. sometimes a bit resentful. I'm like, oh, come on, you know, like it takes a lot of privilege to just, you know, quit your day job and be like, hey, I'm just going to do what I love now. Mm -hmm. But I love these real stories of people that have made it work somehow. And I think I don't want to dismiss this concept as a whole that it is really smart and valuable to do something we're naturally good at. I mean, there's nothing that makes more sense, actually, you know, in a yeah. way. <laughs> I think um, the, the love for what you do can carry mm -hmm. you through when it gets hard. Yeah. And as you know, when you run your own business, it gets mm -hmm. hard a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. If you're not really in love with it, then you're, you're not going to keep it going. You're not going to be able totally. to do the things you need to do. Totally. Yeah. And I think we have as a culture, such a high tolerance for doing work we actually don't really love, especially with an employment. Um, I thought in my early twenties, like you, I thought that that's just the way it is that you go somewhere that you don't want to be, you are around people that you don't want to be around <laughs> and you do work that you don't actually care about. I, but yeah. I thought that's adulthood, you know? Yeah, <laughs> so. me too. Me too. <laughs> And I thought, you know, I knew people ran businesses, but I thought it was like this really complicated affair that involved getting, get, you know, getting a premises and a bank loan and, and it was really yeah. formal and all the rest of it, which of course yeah. it was a lot of the time before we had this glorious internet. To play with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Oh, wow. This is super cool. Um, so I'm wondering if people hear this and they are excited and I want to build more community around their business as well. What are the kind of first steps that you would encourage them to think about or maybe tools to look at? I think the, the idea of, of building a community on the internet has got wildly skewed over the last few years. I think that when people think of a, a community, they think of having thousands and thousands of fans and followers. Um, and what it actually means is having proper mutually beneficial relationships with people it's not just about you standing up there on the pedestal and being you know in the spotlight and everybody else is swarming around you you know you're not david bowie <laughs> um if you want a really kind of good sustainable business that lasts you over the long term you need to concentrate on building your community from the inside out and concentrating on one person at a time and 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 having good relationships with people that really is what it's all about reaching out to individual people one at a time and taking exquisite care of each other in whatever way that that transpires you know um and when you do that growth naturally happens 
But when you go for the big, massive audience and loads of fans and dealing with lots and lots of people, then you're going to end up frustrated. Like you're either going to have to take shortcuts and it's going to feel really sleazy and icky and yuck, or it's just not going to happen for you and you're going to feel like a failure. It's, it really is about building an audience one person at a time, building a community one person at a time and being a decent human being about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I actually also really think that there's something deeply healing about that, about mm. looking at the relationships we're building around our businesses as real human relationships, just the way that we would make friends, maybe with a different focus. Like I don't need to be close friends with everyone that I'm working with. That's maybe not realistic. Um, but it is still a human relationship. And I'm really excited about the rehumanizing aspect of trading with people in a fair and fair way of like looking someone in the eye and being like, these are the things that I love sharing about. Like, if you're excited about this too, you can be in my community and maybe some of my work will resonate with you and you will at some point maybe you want to make an investment to you know work with me one-on-one or take a class or whatever. And if not, that's cool, but we all are open and caring and there's boundaries around what we have to give. It's not about overgiving and like making nope. everything available for free. Oh, but God. It's just, yeah, <laughs> but it's just about like, generally being in a spirit of generosity and sharing and and understanding that competition really is hurtful for everyone which again like sounds like such a cliche and there's lots of memes about that as well but I think doing community-based work really illustrates that and it's just the truth it does hurt everyone and it's beautiful and really healing to step out of that I feel like now in my fifth year of business I'm still like uncovering or unpeeling these layers of of conditioning and hurtful things that I've experienced in my years of employment, what that has done to my understanding of myself, of my value in the world, of my talents and the things that I'm excited about and my relationship to creativity. I feel like every, yeah, every year there's a new level of understanding like, wow, that wasn't right. That's not, you know, that's not what humans are meant to spend their time like. And, oh, and that kind yeah. of thing so yeah cool thank you um I'm also kind of um this is this could be about communities but it could also be about something else I would just love to know a little bit more about um what has worked for you and what hasn't so I think you've been really courageous and like starting over last year and and that's really beautiful I think that's like a key skill to know when to close something down and move on to something else so yeah, maybe you can speak to that a little bit more. Yeah, um, I mean, I think being able to quit something, being able to say, no, this is wrong, this isn't working, and just be able to let it go is, is a bit of a superpower of mine, I have to say. I have a very, very low tolerance for not being happy, not feeling good. Like I've, I've, I've done that as far as I'm concerned in my life. I've spent many, many years not being happy and putting up with stuff that I knew in my core wasn't right. And that's not something I do anymore. Um, so that was a really, really easy de- decision for me. And also because I had this backup gig, um, which was, you know, a set number of hours every month. I knew that I'd have a regular paycheck. I could still be at home and it was, you know, it's still freelance. So I, I didn't have to worry about any of that. And that gave me this lovely kind of safety net to, to just be like, no, okay, let's just let life wash over me for a bit and see what happens. And when the idea for this business hit me, it was just, I, I just knew like down to my very bones, like this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Like, and you can see, like even now when I think about it, I just start smiling. I just love it. Um, yeah. And, but it was, let's see, September, October, November, December. I got my first paying client in January. So I had four mm-hmm. months of no money coming in. Mm-hmm. I did a couple of workshops for, for people in Copenhagen, um, but as a kind mm-hmm. of side thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and those four months were spent. Uh, I started off by e- emailing every single person I knew, every mm-hmm. single person I had in my address book, every single person I had on my in my Facebook friends, like my Instagram followers. 
every single person that I could possibly think of. Mm -hmm. um, I'd send them an email and say, I'm doing a new thing. This is what it's good. This is who it's good for. Like, if you know anyone, mm -hmm. let me know. Um, and the other part of that was, was going out and kind of meeting new people and mm -hmm. you know, doing collaborations with people. I was, I was a guest expert in, in people's groups. I was, um, I don't think I got any on, onto any podcasts during that first few months. I think my first podcast interview uh, about this business happened in January as well. Um, and just kind of, yeah, keeping an eagle eye on what people were up to. If anybody says anything about, oh, I'm interested in community building, then I was in there like a shot. And I was like, <laughs> hi, <laughs> you know me, you know, this is what I'm doing now. Like, okay, let's chat. Um, yeah. Um, and that is basically, I mean, I do, I do, a, uh, it was monthly, but it's now weekly newsletter where I share a ton of resources and kind of insights into my journey. Um, I piss about a bit on Instagram with no real strategy or consistency or anything. I just share who I am and what I'm up to. Um, and I, I love doing stuff like this, getting on podcast episodes. Mm -hmm. But apart from those three things, the talking to people is the bulk of my marketing. That's the thing that I do above anything else. And mm -hmm. I make sure that every single person who comes into my world is greeted by name, um, mm -hmm. is, is treated with, with gratitude and respect. Every mm -hmm. single person who signs up to my newsletter gets a personal welcome video from me saying, thank you. What? <laughs> wow. That is incredible. Because it matters, you know, mm -hmm. they've given me their email address. They want to hear from me. They're interested in what I'm doing. What a gift that is. Mm -hmm. Like, thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, so I thank them and I welcome them into my world mm -hmm. and as a byproduct of that, I get so many clients from doing that because people feel like they've been seen and heard and acknowledged and we just, we're starved for that as a mm -hmm. species at the mm -hmm. moment, mm -hmm. you know, we don't get enough people who are willing to, to acknowledge you as a human being rather than a number on a list like mm -hmm. so yeah it was something that was Im important to me the c I, I signed up for a trial for the company who does these little video message things mm -hmm. that I use and they sent me one and I oh. was so touched by it I burst into <laughs> tears I was just like wow I feel see yeah like wow it was so powerful I was like instantly I need to give my people this. Like, yeah. This matters. And, you know, bollocks to the marketing, bollocks too. This will be a thing that will get <laughs> clients. Just yeah. what a lovely thing to mm -hmm. do for somebody when they mm -hmm. give you your e their email address. Yeah, totally. Um, I want to do that too. What is oh, that? I'll, I'll, I'll send you the link. It's yeah, the Bonjoro, I think they're called, mm -hmm. that I use. It's quite expensive every month, but it's mm. so worth it. It brings mm. me so much joy. Mm -hmm. um, but but that's, the, that's the stuff I do. That is how I market my business. Mm -hmm. And I am, um, to give you some context, I have about 250 people on my newsletter list at the moment. Mm -hmm. I am earning more money than I ever have in my life on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. And I am booked out until 2020. Mm -hmm. I have about 700 Instagram followers. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not about the numbers. It's about yeah. the quality of the relationships within that, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of, that's what works for me. It's talking to people. It's mm -hmm. having these conversations. It's sharing my passion and my enthusiasm for what I do. Mm -hmm. um, and, and treating people like people instead of, mm -hmm you know targets or mm -hmm. potential clients or numbers or you know all of that horrible stuff that mm -hmm. we're taught in online marketing school we're supposed mm -hmm. to do yeah <laughs> yeah totally that's beautiful i oh my god that's just the most massive thunderstorm i've ever seen going outside my window oh, wow <laughs> oh i can hear the thunder that's yeah. amazing yeah I love thunderstorms. um yeah that that really feels true to me as well i have um, really nice, beautiful experiences with just showing up for people. Like my 
very first clients I also found by just answering tech questions. Like I, the first uh, two years, I really focused on building websites for people. And I was noticing that to me, it really felt like a feminist issue because I was seeing so many women being locked out of their own websites and like really feeling disempowered around understanding the tech and like, you know, some guy had made it for them and they yeah. felt quite intimidated by it and were like, oh, I don't know, you know, like, can I change like how? And I'm like, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> Let me show you how, you know? And so I just hung out in other people's Facebook groups a lot, which was more of a thing at the time. I think Facebook groups for me are not so much a space I want to be in anymore because Facebook has changed, you know, like that's, mm -hmm. but it's different. But I really, that was so cool at the time to just, I would be in these huge groups with thousands of people and a couple of times a week, I would like put WordPress in the search bar and see all the dozens of questions around WordPress that people <laughs> had. And I would just very sincerely answer their questions without saying like, you know, if, and then if you want to buy this thing, here's where you need to go. I was just like being helpful. And mm -hmm. every now and then someone was like, cool, I get what you're trying to say to me, but can I just hire you to do that? Because this seems <laughs> a bit, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I want to hire someone to do that. And so I totally agree. That's so beautiful. Just like caring for people and showing up and making them feel seen and careful is so powerful. Yeah. Um, what kind of online spaces do you enjoy being in? So as I'm just interested, you know, like how, what, yeah, what, what do you enjoy? Well, this always surprises people, but I'm really not a group person. I do not mm -hmm. thrive in, in groups at all. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm I'm a massive introvert to the point of like being a recluse. <laughs> um, but I love I love hanging out on Instagram. I love the the community I have around me on Instagram, and I love how kind of loose and unstructured it is, and I can be. And the majority of my activity on Instagram happens privately in the direct message feature. Mm -hmm. um, I love like replying to people's stories and having conversations and and i get a lot of clients kind of not necessarily finding me on there but getting to know me on there and understanding more about who i am and what i'm about and that i do actually practice what i preach mm -hmm. <laughs> um so it's a really nice tool for people to kind of hang out casually and and just have chats more often than not i'm talking about my inflatable bathtub or the latest episode <laughs> of drag race or you know it's not business related at all but it's building those relationships regardless you know person to person rather than a target to mm -hmm. market marketer to target you know um i love sophie's group but mm -hmm. again i'm not massively active in that she has one feature on a friday which is um where you recap on your week mm -hmm. and it's like uh she does this wonderful thing which i love which is a rose bud thorn so mm -hmm. rose is something that's gone well a bud is something that's kind of in the works and the thorn is something that you've struggled with and that i love that that's part of my mm -hmm. friday morning routine to go mm -hmm. in and, and share that um and occasionally i might reach out to somebody kind of as part of the group mm -hmm. i like the little virtual circle thing that she did where you and i met mm -hmm. um but again group calls and things if i'm not the leader i find it difficult to understand what my role is within mm -hmm. that and that's part of the autistic mm -hmm. social thing um oh facebook is a minefield i'm still in a few groups but i don't engage anymore i don't like mm -hmm. spending time there um and i'm also in another uh, mighty networks group which is the what works network by mm -hmm. uh, tara mcmullen who's also a client of mine mm -hmm. Um, and that's for kind of established mm -hmm. business owners sharing kind of tips and tricks and stuff. And I really like that. I've, I've only been in there for a couple of months, so I haven't really kind of found like, which is the thing that happens regularly that I can comment on and kind of engage with. Mm -hmm. Um, I like, I like to have something that makes it part of my routine, but it's also mm -hmm. a great place to kind of find, find new people and find mm -hmm. resources and, and stuff like that. But that's mostly it. Other than that, I'm just, you know, yeah. talking to my, my newsletter peeps or, or yeah. if I've got time, I'll be on Instagram. But mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes total sense. Yeah, I definitely want to learn more about your inflatable bathtub because bathtubs are <laughs> like 
I live for having a bath at the end of a long day Mm -hmm. and it is so hard I mean because I have a dog I work for myself you know it's just a bit tricky and um, I'm just staying with friends at the moment because I've just moved to Scotland but if I stay here I might not have a bathtub so this is definitely something I need to log into yeah Yeah, they don't do they don't do bathtubs at all here I think Mm -hmm. a few people have maybe out in the country they're more so but Copenhagen bathrooms are notorious for being like tiny. Um, That's cute. All showers, and I have to, I have to be submerged in water regularly, or yeah. I just go insane. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my lovely fiance Lars found this. I think it's a Dutch company called Tubble, mm-hmm. and Ooh. they do. It's it's as big as a full size bathtub. Whoa. It's padded on the bottom. It inflates in about a minute, maybe less. Um, and it's got like a proper plug and stuff. So you can just put the pipe down the drain and drain it when you're done. It's a life changer. And it folds down into like a bag, a tiny, Ooh. tiny little bag. Ooh. And it has saved my life. I was just going crazy. And I was looking at like old Victorian copper tubs and um, some crappy Chinese inflatable tubs that were just like an inflatable bucket, basically, or mm-hmm. kids paddling pools. Like, I need something to get underwater. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, absolutely amazing. I love it. That I sounds like amazing. All day. <laughs> I will definitely look into that. So cool to know. Um, before we go, I just want to love, I would love to hear what you're offering. And I'm very excited about your newsletter. Definitely going to get on that. So that's one thing we already know about and I'll link to that. But what else are you offering and where can people find you if they want to know more about you or your inflatable bathtub? (laughs) (laughs) Um, I'm most often on Instagram. That's the only social media I'm on. And I'm Ellie Trier Communities over on there. So if you want to come over and follow me and slide into my dms to ask about my bathtub you will be <laughs> welcome with open arms um but my home base is my website which is elitreacommunities.com um and that's where i talk about all my client projects sign up for the sunday letters they are really really good that's not just me blowing my own trumpet like everybody says they're really really good i love doing them i pour my heart and soul into them you get a lot more kind of personal stories from me, tons of resources. Um, yeah, they're a really, really nice place to hang out. Um, and in terms of work, I've got Love is Great, The Numbers is coming back in uh, mid-October. It's a six-week program. Uh, very, very small. Like there's under 10 people going through it at any one time. Um, and I will give you a link to that because it's not easy to find on my website. So if you applications are kind of open, but I haven't done a big launch or anything for it yet. Um, but you can still find the, the page and apply and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and that's lovely. I'm running the beta round at the moment. We're almost finished. And it's just the loveliest group of women that I just want to hug them all, all the time. <laughs> um, and that's more about building a network, getting connected. Like if you're, if you're starting a new business or if you're super introverted and this whole idea of outreach makes you want to cry, um, it's all super introvert friendly and it's all about finding your kindred spirits, basically. Um, and then the community projects. If people are interested in running a community project with me, I am just about to open up bookings officially for 2020. Um, and my prices will be going up considerably then as well. So if people want to talk to me about community project, then between now and mid September is a really good time to come to it. Um, I offer like a, a, a one 90 minute standalone session, which is just kind of strategy and objectives and getting the theme right. Um, and which is based on the first session of my bigger package, which is called conception to completion. And that's where we work together over three months, um, doing two months of prep and one month of you actually running your project. Um, And that's full on and you get a whole load of of extra material and pre-written stuff and templates and all sorts of good stuff all the way through. Cool. (sighs) But all the details are on my website. (laughs) 
Awesome. No, yeah, that sounds great. And a link to that in show notes. If anyone didn't catch any of that and where to find it, this will all be there waiting for you. Thank you so, so much for sharing everything that you have shared today. I'm really excited to bring this out to everyone and like see what people think about it. I'm sure everyone will need to know more about the path tab. <laughs> <laughs> as do I. And yeah, just I'm really grateful to talk to you. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's been a real treat. Thank you. <laughs>